You might already be familiar with simplified, scaled down 3D models, such as model airplanes or ships. For the Puget Sound, we aren't talking about physical models that you can hold in your hands, but mathematical models, a series of equations solved using computers. And these models aren't of objects, but of natural systems, watersheds, rivers, food webs, the estuary. We don't know everything about exactly how these systems work, like how water moves around an estuary or how fish behave. Models represent our best guess about the way things work, often based on information we have collected in the real world. And the more complicated the system we want to describe, more equations are required. The Puget Sound region faces some really important decisions right now about how climate change and more and more people moving to our region and the roads and buildings required to support them will affect the animals and habitats that we rely on and that means so much to us. Everything in the Puget Sound ecosystem is connected. Our streets, our roads, buildings, forests, even our gardens are connected to rivers and streams. The rivers and streams in turn drain into Puget Sound. That water circulates and the chemicals in that water affect the species that live in Puget Sound, like salmon and salmon food, seagrass, orcas. And our physical, mental, and economic well-being is tightly connected to all of this. And so we need a way to understand how changes to climate and the land will affect us and our ecosystem. And this requires mathematical modeling. In fact, it requires several models. We are very lucky. These models are already individually operational. What this project will do will allow the models to talk to each other. We're going to integrate models of land use, of our Puget Sound watersheds, of the estuary and its waters, the marine food web, and social and economic well-being of humans. And using this chain of linked models, we're gonna ask questions about climate change and human actions on the landscape and how this all impacts the interconnected Puget Sound system. And most importantly, how different decisions we make will minimize the trade-offs among the things we care about the most. The Puget Sound watershed is a mosaic of land cover types, urban and suburban development, agricultural land, forests, wetlands, and alpine habitats. This mosaic changes over time as we develop, convert, or restore areas of the landscape. In order to understand how management decisions impact our region, we first need a model that can predict, in detail, future land uses for every part of Puget Sound's large watershed. Using our land cover change model, we can create maps of future land cover types under different population growth, development, and climate change scenarios. The second model in our chain, Velma, uses these high-resolution land cover maps to mathematically describe watershed characteristics and connectivity. Precipitation falling on Puget Sound watersheds journeys through diverse land use and habitats, alpine, forest, agricultural, floodplain, urban, etc. Each imparting distinct effects on water quality from streams and rivers on their way to the estuary. Velma is our watershed model for representing habitat-specific interactions of plant, soil, and hydrologic processes that regulate water quality across wide spatial and temporal scales, from plots to the size of urban rain gardens to whole watersheds, and from days to centuries. In doing so, Velma illuminates cause and effect across scales that local and basin scale Puget Sound restoration managers and planners will require for developing ecosystem restoration plans. When linked with our land cover model, we can use Velma to estimate how alternative scenarios of population growth, development, and climate change affects terrestrial ecosystem services. Also, Velma predicts changes to Puget Sound rivers, their flows, pollutant loadings, juvenile salmon outmigration to the Puget Sound are received as inputs into the Salish Sea model and Atlantis model. People often talk about the Puget Sound or the Salish Sea being like a bathtub, a large enclosed basin of water. It's not unless you normally fill your bathtub from different spouts and the tub is constantly overflowing from the top. Salish Sea consists of the Georgia Basin in Canada, 
and Puget Sound in US waters. It's a body of water that's fed by the ocean water coming in from the west along the bottom, and by nearly 68 freshwater rivers and 99 wastewater outfalls entering at various points. Tides, freshwater inflows, and meteorological forces, including wind, solar radiation, uh, induce mixing and circulation of these waters. Not all waters of Puget Sound have the same properties. Some basins are well mixed and have a lot of oxygen in it, while others are depleted. Some regions have higher levels of pollution, while others are relatively clean. It's important to know how these properties will be affected by climate change or human activities in watersheds, and how those changes will affect species and habitats and people who care about and depend on them. And for that, we need a model. The Salish Sea model developed by the Pacific Northwest National Laboratories is such a model that describes the tides, circulation, and mixing in three dimensions. The Salish Sea model then computes annual biogeochemical reactions, including nutrient consumption by algae, their growth and predation by zooplankton, effects on water quality, including dissolved oxygen, pH, and exposure to toxic chemicals, such as heavy metals and PCBs. This project will enable information from Velma watershed model, water flows and chemistry from Puget Sound landscape to pass into our Salish Sea model. It will also allow information from our Salish Sea model, such as temperature, salinity, chemistry, and plankton and toxic concentrations to be sent to the Atlantis ecosystem model. Atlantis, in turn, will then describe the impact on Puget Sound food webs and habitats. So the Atlantis model of Puget Sound is this ecosystem model. So it's a model that simulates a marine ecosystem from um, everything from bacteria to currents to biogeochemistry, all through the food web to fisheries and fisheries management. We can also simulate things like climate change or other types of human impacts. So these models serve as sandboxes that let us um, test hypotheses that we couldn't test in real life. The models are built in something called the Atlantis Ecosystem Framework, uh, which is really just a, a, um, a framework that can be customized to whatever marine system you want. So what you do is you get all the available data. So things like um, what are the species in the system, how do they relate to each other? Like, how do they compete? Uh, who eats who? Uh, how much of each species is there? How much biomass? And then the characteristics of the species, um, you know, what size they are, uh, how much they weigh, when do they reproduce, uh, where do they reproduce, where do they eat? So, because the model is three-dimensional, so it has um, a spatial but also a depth dimension, we really need information that tells us the, how those species move throughout the system so that we can simulate it properly. So it really uses um, it's what we call data hungry. It uses all available data. And what we don't know then we have to extrapolate from other models or from other systems. The environment and human systems of Puget Sound are inextricably linked. As inhabitants of this region, we both affect and are affected by the environment around us. We benefit from the ability to catch and eat fish, swim and sail, and grow and sell crops. But our lives are also affected by wildfire smoke, heat waves, legacies of toxic pollution, and historical inequity. This model will help build on what we learn about environmental outcomes from the other models in our project. Think salmon, orcas, green spaces and predict how those outcomes are likely to affect various dimensions of human well-being, like health, economic vitality, and equity. This model brings together critical aspects of all the other models into one assessment that will help us minimize trade-offs and identify enduring solutions to reach our collective desired future.